Hello brothers and sisters in Christ out there. I decided to do a video pleading with the body of Christ. The title of this video was, Is the body of Christ forgetting to rejoice and give thanks? And it's directed at being attacked. Attacked personally. Being attacked for standing for God's perfect written word. Uh, being attacked for standing for the real Jesus of the King James Bible. And it just seems like everybody's first response is to attack back. I'm getting attacked, I gotta attack back. I'm getting attacked, man. I gotta stand up for myself. You know? And when they can't refute scripture, they're gonna start attacking you personally. And those personal attacks are drawing people in and they're forgetting to rejoice and give thanks. And we're gonna go to Acts 5.40. Chapter 5, verse 40. Now this is after Paul and them were arrested and they're, t uh, they're trying to decide what to do to them and one of the guys stand up and says that if this work be of men it will come to naught. Just let it alone. So, verse 40. And to him they agreed and when they had called the apostles and beat them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Now, Paul, what was their attitude? Was their attitude, oh no, i got to go to the streets and start preaching how evil and wicked they are. They beat us. Who are they to do this? They, they look like sissies. They're closet sodomites. Did they start making personal attacks? Did they start whining and complaining about it? No. What did they do? And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily, and here's the next part, and daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Now, a brother in Christ said the best thing that we can do, and I agree 100%, is when they come out and attack you, um, like I said, they can't deal with scripture, so they're going to attack you personally. So when they attack what you're teaching and they attack you personally, the best thing you can do is continue preaching and teaching. That's what Paul did. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. When you got these people attacking you, they're trying to draw you away from preaching and teaching the Word of God to start fighting with them. It becomes a bickering match. Don't fall for that. Okay, they were suffering for Jesus Christ and they rejoiced. I think a lot of uh, brothers and sisters in Christ out there have forgotten how to fall on their knees and rejoice when they're being persecuted. When they're being attacked personally is the biggest one right now. When they're being attacked personally, they get angry and, and they're wanting to fight back and they're wanting to yell and scream. And they've forgotten how to fall on their knees, knees and be counted worthy to suffer for Jesus Christ. And when they, you should never attack back when it's personal, okay? I've said this in previous videos, whoever's attacking you personally, you get rid of them, 10 more are gonna pop up. You get rid of those 10, 50 more are gonna pop up. You're not to be attacking a man, you're to be attacking the ministry, the false teachings he does. And you do it with scripture and you keep putting out teachings. They hate the true gospel, you keep putting out teachings on the true gospel. They hate the Godhead and they love their trinity, then you just keep putting out teachings on the Godhead. They hate dispensationalism, you keep putting it in. They hate the pre-time of Jacob's trouble and they can't refute it so they attack you personally. You ignore the personal attacks and you keep coming back with more teachings standing for the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. The Bible version issue. Well, they, they can't refute this, so then they start calling you names. Do you start fighting back and start calling them names? No. You turn around and keep doing videos saying, this is God's perfect written word. That's what the Apostle Paul did. He came out and he started rejoicing, and then he ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. He kept preaching. If you'll turn to 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Okay. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And people say, well, what does this have to do with being persecuted? This is talking physically. There are times that you're going to get headaches. Uh, you're going to have a hard time sleeping. And a lot of it's going to be a result of you being attacked. Attacked for the Word of God. Attacked personally. Um, sometimes we forget that God's grace is sufficient for us. Because there's times where I pray... Uh, Lord, get this person off a of brother's back. Get that person off a of brother's back. Get, get rid of them. And like I said, the Lord brings to my attention that we're not fighting men. We're fighting servants of Satan. We're fighting, um, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're just supposed to be attacking false lies, false teachings. Okay? And God's grace is supposed to be sufficient for us. We, if you look in the Old Testament, you remember the Jewish people in Egypt. They were being physically beaten, they were being physically whipped, and they kept multiplying. It actually increased, I believe it increased how, how they were multiplying. It didn't lower the numbers, it didn't stop them, it increased it. Um, you look at uh, 200 A.D., um, I can't remember the, the time period, but shortly after uh, Jesus' death and Paul's death and everything, the early church, Rome was persecuting them, trying to snuff out the Christian religion, the Christian faith, uh, Bible-believing Christians, and killing lots and lots of Christian, lots of Christians, and yet, they kept growing. The, the, the more people were getting saved, more people adding to the body of Christ, the body of Christ kept growing. Okay? Right now there's a lot of persecuting going on and it's not stopping the body of Christ. So remember that verbal is nothing. Uh, them attacking you verbally and personal attacks is nothing compared to physical attacks physically dying for the word of Christ. Don't act like it's the end of the world if somebody personally attacks you. I don't care if it's the millionth time they've personally attacked you. Okay? It's nothing compared to what the early Christians went through. And if you have to think that thought and get that in your head saying, yes, this is getting me angry, but you know what? It's nothing compared to the early Christians went through. The tortures, the being burned at the stake, the wickedness and how they were treated. If they can go through that and continue praising the Lord for being and rejoicing that they be counted worthy to suffer for Jesus Christ, someone verbally attacking me is not going to stop me. It's not going to get me to go crazy. I'm not going to do it. It's nothing compared to what they went through. So first, the, I think the body of Christ is forgetting, not everybody, but there's a, a, a group of them that are forgetting to rejoice. Their first response is not falling on their knees, praising God. Um, I had an atheist on my channel trying to attack me and everything, and you look on his channel, it said he's into warlocks and witchcraft, and my first thought was to tell the brethren and, celebrate, and praise the Lord. I praised the Lord until the, I praised the Lord, I got attacked. I got attacked for this book. I got attacked for standing for truth. An atheist came on my channel and attacked me. That needs to be your first response, okay? And then you need to realize that the verbal attacks and the personal attacks, they're nothing compared to what Christians had to suffer in the past. And they're going to be nothing compared to what Christians are going to have to suffer in the future. The saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now, notice it says, therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities. Okay, 2 Corinthians 10, chapter 10, verse 17. A lot of people know this. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Okay. And remember, there's only one Lord, Jesus Christ. So, when you glory, you glory in Jesus Christ. You give God all the glory. Okay. When you get attacked, you give God the glory. 
thank you, Lord. I'm standing for your perfect written word, and because of that, I'm getting attacked. They can't refute your perfect written word, the King James Bible. So now they're trying to attack me personally. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, to be counted worthy. Second okay. Corinthians chapter 12, go back to chapter 12, verse 15. And I, and this is a big thing, when you get into full-time ministry, part-time ministry, when you're trying to, like me, trying to get into the ministry and more hands-on uh, teaching and preaching, this right here is what you got to remember. And I, I believe that some of the people that are making videos are forgetting this. So it's, let's read this and please, please listen to the words. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthians, the body of Christ in Corinth. That's who the you is. Though, though the more abundant I love you, the less I be loved. Now I noticed that last part. We're going to talk about the first part. Gladly spend and be spent. When you get into full-time ministry, part-time ministry, making little videos, defending the Bible, the Bible version issue, defending, defending truth, you got to realize that you need to have the attitude that I'm doing it to be spend. What is it? You got to spend and be spent. You got to understand the cost of putting your face out there, okay, and willing to stand and give your all for the purpose of what you're doing for the ministry and for the brothers and sisters in Christ out there. And I noticed it says. And I love you, see, the more abundant I love you, the less I be loved. When you put your face out there and you're going to say, I love the Lord, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm going to stand for truth, you're going to realize how many people hate you. And as you stand for the book, you stand for truth, people are going to hate you more and more and more. And sometimes, because with Corinth, uh, the Apostle Paul says you need to check to see if ye be in the faith. So he knew some of those people that are professing Christians were not going to love them. They were going to hate them. The more I love you by preaching the truth, you need to stop doing this. You need to make sure that you truly believed in Jesus Christ. People start hating them. Here's the true gospel. They don't like it. Here's the true Godhead. They don't like it. Here's the true truth about the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. They don't like it. When you put your face out there, you are going to be hated. The more you love the brothers and sisters in Christ by wanting to preach truth to them, the more the world's going to hate you. The more the false Christians are going to pop up. Okay? So, remember, your attitude, if you're wanting to get into this, you need to have the attitude of, be, of what is it, gladly to be spend, to spend and be spent. Okay? To give you all and to realize there's times that you're going to get exhausted. You're going to get attacked and get attacked and you're going to have to take time and say, hey, I need to take a break. I'm giving it all. I'm spent. I need to take a break. Okay. I need to spend time with the Lord. And my biggest advice for the brothers out there and even if some sisters are doing it, when you're making a video, if someone attacks you personally and you see it, and, it, and you have every right, every right to be super, super angry and mad about it, do not make a recording at that moment. You go for a walk. You talk with the Lord. You pray with the Lord. You give God the glory for being attacked for truth. And because they can't handle this, they attack you personally. You go for a walk. You cool down. You calm down. That way when you do sit there and if you feel like God is still calling you to make a video rebuking that person for attacking truth, you don't rebuke the person for attacking you personally. They're going to keep doing it. They're lost. They're on their way to hell. They're not going to have conviction for it. Okay? You make a video saying, hey, this is the truth I preached. He couldn't handle it and he attacked me personally. Why? Because you couldn't handle the truth. And you stick to the word of God like Paul did. Went right back out preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Realize that you're going to have to spend and be spent. There are times you got to take a break from the ministry and go for a walk. Talk with the Lord. For me, walking on the beach. 
few, my cue cards with the memory scriptures. I sit up here and just talk with the Lord a lot. Okay. Um, especially when I get blocked. When I'm doing a study and I'm like, it sounds great, I'm happy, I'm getting to go, and every once in a while you hit a stop, spot where it's like, you hit a wall. I go for a walk. Okay. But for this point, you got to be gladly spent and be spent and understand that the more you stand for truth and the more you put your face out there, the more people are going to hate you. Okay. And you're doing it because you love the body of Christ and that you love Jesus Christ. And people are going to hate you for it. And this one everybody should know, Ephesians 5, chapter 5, verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice it says in all things. It says give thanks in all things. No, just the good things, the positive things. That's the only thing you give thanks for. No, you give thanks in all things. And that includes being attacked. Okay? That includes uh, being sick. Okay? That includes when things don't go right. That includes everything. I got really sick first time in a long time. My daughter came out and got me sick. She was sick. And I'm like, man, I haven't felt like this in a long time. And, and before that, I was bragging about it. I was like, not super bragging, but I was talking to my uncle and, and some family members saying, because they got sick, and he was telling me how the sickness is going around in the schools. The kids are getting sick, passing it on, giving it to the parents. People going to work, passing it on. Everybody was getting sick. And I'm like, well, you know, I eat right. I stay in the Word of God, and I haven't gotten sick in a long time. And I praise the Lord for it. And it's, it could have been a little bit like I was bragging, but the Lord's like, oh, really? Well, take that. And I got sick for a week. And boy, did it hit me hard. And when I get sick, I get weak. And I'm like, Lord, thank you. Thank you for taking me down a notch. Okay. We're to give thanks in all things. And for the main point of this study, when people are personally attacking you, or people are personally attacking brothers and sisters in Christ, personally attacking ministries that we know are true, you're supposed to give thanks. And I think a lot of the people in the body of Christ have forgotten that. A lot of Bible-believing Christians have forgotten to give thanks. They don't give thanks anymore. The moment they get attacked, they got to turn around and attack back. That's their first response. I got to attack back. I got to attack back. Well, I'm so angry. I got to make the video right now while I'm angry. No. Give thanks. Don't forget to give thanks. Let's see. When you do not fall on your knees and give thanks to God, give God the thanks, glory, and rejoice to be counted worthy to suffer for Jesus Christ and His Word, bitterness sets in. And when bitterness is like a seed, and if you don't dig that seed up and throw it out, what happens? It starts to grow. And that bitterness turns to anger. The anger turns to hate. And that bitterness can destroy a ministry. That bitterness can destroy a marriage. That bitterness can destroy a Christian. Your walk with the Lord. You see that bitterness, you need to fall on your knees and talk with the Lord and say, Lord, help get this bitterness out of my heart. Get it out of my life. I don't want it in my life. I don't want it to turn to anger. Oh, it turned to anger. Lord, it's getting desperate now. Lord, please, please help me. Oh, now it turned to hate. Oh, I'm just, in, I'm up to my neck. I'm in so much trouble, Lord. Please help me. Get that bitterness out of your heart. So it won't destroy your ministry, your walk with the Lord, your marriage, your fellowship. Let that out, your fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't let it happen, okay? Now, I've said this before, but I want to go in depth. I'm going to read to you guys. I know the volume might be low. I'm outside. I haven't been able to get a mic. Money's, money's a little tight right now. And... Uh, Hopefully next month or the month after, I'll be able to get a new camera that has a mic accessibility. So if you have to turn it up a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, but I wanted to do it outside. I've been doing videos inside. So, spring is finally here. I wanted to do some videos outside. But I've already talked to, to people on videos saying, Hey, I went and talked to Robert Breaker first about 
the God in three persons, how he misused scripture, he didn't prove his point, that I stood for the terms that are in the Bible, I stood for the Godhead of the Bible, when I, I already knew he was lost, but I never got to talk to the man. So I talked to the man, and I tried to see if maybe he was just fed lies and deceived. And no, he's not deceived. He actually believes what he's teaching. He's lost on his way to hell, so I preached the gospel to him. And what's going on is a lot of people that are being attacked, they're going over there and they're attacking the man. Like they're trying to fellowship with the man because they're saying, these verses say this, and he goes, this verse says that. No, these verses say And you're fe trying to fellowship with someone who's lost and on their way to hell. You're not to do that. If you turn to 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14. A lot of you guys know this. Brothers and sisters in Christ out there know this. And it's not just them. I talked to Edward P.F. back when he was attacking the true gospel, and I realized the man's lost. I preached the gospel to him, and I haven't had anything to do with him since. Okay? You don't fellowship with the lost world. Okay, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, lost people? And what communion hath light with dark, darkness, lost people? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, servants of Satan? What hath, what hath part, see, I gotta say it right, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, lost world? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols, the Trinity? You have nothing to do with Trinity people. You, you rebuke them, you correct them, they want nothing to do with the Godhead. You have nothing to do with them. You don't, I mean, you don't fellowship with them. You don't keep trying to fight with them and argue with them, trying to use scripture, trying to prove the Godhead when they reject the Godhead for the Trinity. Okay. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And I want to be honest with you people. A lot of you guys that are just going over and fighting and fighting and name calling and make jesting, making jokes. Um, you're starting to defile yourself a little bit. Your conscience should be convicting you of that, saying, I'm not supposed to be doing that. I'm not supposed to be playing their game. The Bible says I'm to preach truth. Okay? I'm supposed to attack evil spirits and wickedness in high places. I'm supposed to attack false teachings. Okay? I'm not supposed to lower to their level and start doing personal attacks and jesting, making jokes about them. Verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them. Like I told you, I have nothing to do with them from that point on. I'm, and I'll tell you what I would do if I was real. I just try not to get so uh, swallowed up in their world, their lost world and their world of arguing and fighting. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not unclean things, and I will receive you. Those people that reject truth and that are attacking you and it gets to the point to attack you personally, they're unclean. You're not to touch them. You're not to have anything to do with them. Okay? Until they repent and believe, you don't have to have anything to do with them other than to preach the gospel to them. And I did that. And a lot of you have done that. Verse 18, And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, you want to get them mad, not purposely, but you know what could get them mad. Make sure I didn't leave anything else. Yeah, like I told you, you rebuke what they're teaching and you preach the gospel to them. Never, ever let it get personal on your side. They're going to let it get personal, they're going to attack you personal, but don't let it get personal where you start fellowshipping with people who are obviously lost. Even not just the teachers, the false teachers and false preachers, but even the followers that follow them and not the Word of God. Okay. And yes, they're going to call us Bible believers, like we're following this guy, we're following that guy. Like I said, they can't deal with Scripture. Don't let it get personal on your side that you're fellowshipping with them and arguing with them. Don't fall into the trap. Don't fall into the trap of get, of them getting you to play their game. 
But what you should really be doing, and I'm telling brothers and sisters Christ, I'm not saying, hey, let's go over there and let's start fighting and start this whole thing riled up. But if you truly, truly love the word like I do, and you just feel like the Lord's saying, you've got to go over there and say something, do not address the person in the video. Do not go over and just ignore them. Do not go over there and address Robert Breaker. Do not go over there and address uh, Edward P.F. You go over there, you rebuke the video, and you're talking to the people watching the video. You act like you're, you type it in like you're talking to the people watching the video saying, this person's wrong, here's the scriptures to prove he's wrong. This person is, like when it comes to the gospel, this person is lost. But if all you ever do sometimes is just say he's lost, he's lost, he's lost, he's lost, and it's truth, people aren't going to listen, I've found. But if you just come out and say, hey, here's some verses, like with uh, God and Three Persons with Robert Breaker, I said, here's truth, here's the definition of person, this, the person in this video is teaching falsehood. He's, he's lying to you, he's deceiving you, here's the truth. And I was addressing people watching the video. Next thing I know, I got people talking with me. Now, a lot of them just had hate and anger, but I had people talking with me saying, well, I didn't know about the, um, the definition for person. When you lay it out like that, truth, you're right, you can't say God in three persons. That is a pagan trinity. That is the Catholic trinity. And then you have people who don't. But if I just came on here saying, this man's a heretic, he's lost, he's on his way to hell, and it's truth, if that's all I did, people wouldn't listen to you. They wouldn't listen to me. Okay? We're not to have fellowship with them. When you go over there to use this right here, the sword of the Spirit, and you debunk him through scripture and say he's wrong about this, this, and this. Um, he, he's like a gospel message. You go, okay, there's these verses. There's this. This is the true gospel. This is what the Bible preaches. He teaches a false gospel. This is how you get saved. Time is running out. Uh, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. Proof after proof with scripture and scripture. You address the people watching the video so they do not get deceived. You don't address Edward P.F. and start arguing with them and fighting with them in the comments. You don't address Robert Breaker. Um, if he comes on and talks, at this point, like I said, I talked to him and he's lost. You don't address Robert Breaker anymore. He called Jesus a liar. He, when the Bible doesn't, tell, doesn't teach what he wants it to teach, he, find, he goes to outside sources. He's not a Bible believer. You don't address Robert Breaker. Okay, you address the people watching the video, so people don't get deceived by this man. And I got one more part I want to read because people have forgotten this too. And I pray that I know I'm not perfect, and I know I'm going to stumble and I'm going to fall sometimes. But I want to always remember this. Okay, we're going to same chapter, Second Corinthians six, but we're going to read verses one through ten to remind people what it means to be a Christian, what's going to happen, what it means to be in ministry again. Okay. We then, as workers together with Him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. You don't want to receive the grace of God in vain. You don't want to let your... That goes back to talking about um, bitterness. Okay. Not giving God the glory. Okay. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, in the day of salvation have I succured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Okay. Behold, now is the day of salvation. That's why I, when I realize I'm talking to a lost person, just pray, I just link the gospel message and I'm done with them. Now is the time accepted, the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now in this dispensation is the easiest time to get saved. And yet, not many people are going to get saved in these last days because they reject Jesus Christ. Three, giving no offense in anything, no offense in anything, okay, that the ministry be not blamed. You can teach truth, and that's going to offend the lost world. It's not going to offend brothers and sisters in Christ. But you can lose your temper. You can set a bad example, and it's going to become an offense. Okay? And your ministry is going to be blamed. Okay? I lose my temper, 
Um, I start calling people names, be personal. If I start attacking, falling into the trap of attacking people per personally, I'm going to give offense, and my ministry is going to be blamed, and they'll have every right to be blamed. You're not to fall into their game making personal attacks. Okay. But here we go in number four, verse four. But in all things, approving ourselves. Have we forgotten that? Proving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience. Are we realizing that we're losing patience too quickly? We're to be patient. In afflictions, that's approving God when we're being afflicted, whether it be physically or verbally. Okay? In necessities, in distress, Things not always going right, and that makes you turn back to the Lord and focus even harder on the Lord and His Word. In stripes, there's people who have been beaten. In imprisonments, there's people in other countries that have been imprisoned. In tumults, in labors, in watching, in fasting, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering. Have you forgotten that we're supposed to be long suffering? By kindness by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. Make sure that you're not faking love because I've come across people that's, oh, we should love everybody. We should just have such great love for everybody. And there's people they don't really love. They're putting on a show. You're not supposed to have fake love. And true love for the world is preaching the gospel. That's where your love starts. That's where it ends. Um, I go fishing with my neighbor. He was lost. I try preaching the gospel here and there. I help all my neighbors out. I'll help a lost person. I'll sometimes, if I just for some reason the Lord says, "Hey, there's a guy hitchhiking. Give him a ride." And then during the ride, I give him a gospel track. I gave one guy a Bible, and I talk with him about God. Okay, I'm not saying you're to hate them, but what I'm saying is, is you're not to be conformed to this world, and you're not to be a friend to this world. You love them by preaching the truth to them. Okay. But don't have fake love. Don't feel like I just got to do it because I, I got to fake my love. You don't want to do that. You're supposed to have love unfeigned. By the word of truth. Some people are forgetting that they're supposed to use this. Not personal attacks, not getting angry and just fighting them verbally. You're supposed to use the word of truth. By the power of God, give God the glory. Give God thanks in all things. By the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left hand. Okay. By honor and dishonor. Okay, you're supposed to have honor and you're going to have people trying to dishonor you. People attacking you again. Okay, that's part of being a Christian. I believe that we all, and I left this out at the beginning, I believe that we are all in some way part of the ministry God has one ministry the body of Christ yet different members I know that some people some brothers have done teachings on this everybody in some way is going to be part of the ministry even if it's something as simple as I read my Bible I pray for the brethren and I study the Bible and every once in a while I'll go out and leave gospel tracts here and there I'm an ambassador for Jesus Christ, so therefore I also make sure I'm living according to the Bible. It could be simply something as simple as that. It's still part of the ministry. You're setting the example by being an ambassador for Jesus Christ. You're praying for the brothers and sisters in Christ. You're praying for certain ministries. You could be donating to certain ministries. Okay? To somebody who's full-time ministry. We're all part of the ministry in some way. See, by evil report and good report, Okay, the lost world is going to give you evil reports. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ are going to lift each other up with good report. Yeah, you're right about this verse, and I found this over here. Hey, don't let them get you down. Just keep standing for the Word of God. Oh, Brian doesn't teach, Brother Brian at the King James Vineyard Ministries, he doesn't teach uh, works based salvation, he teaches internal security. Here's proof. That's good report. Evil report. Oh, that, that King James Video Ministries, he teaches that you can lose your salvation. He teaches that, you know, that Jesus isn't the Son of God. And you get all these evil reports, and people are too lazy to actually look into it, but you're going to get that when you put your face out there. Okay? It's going to happen to me eventually. 
as deceivers and yet true. Okay? You're going to be called a deceiver, and yet what you're teaching is truth. Okay? As unknown, that would be me, and yet well known, that would be ministries that have been out there for a while. Okay? There's people who are going to say, well, who is that guy? Who is he to be talking? Where's his Ph.D. and Th.D.? You know? I'm not that well known. I'm just trying to get out there and show what God has shown me. Uh, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed. Okay? As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. Making many rich, preaching the gospel. Teaching them instruction and in righteousness to store treasures in heaven. As having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Don't forget, brothers and sisters in Christ, don't forget those things. Every once in a while you need to go through those and read those. And line them up with your life saying, you know what, I need to make sure that I truly understand what it means to be a Christian. How the world is going to treat you as a Christian. Right? Even as brothers and sisters in Christ are going to treat you as a Christian. Uh, the things you're going to suffer for Jesus Christ. Uh, the blessings that are coming. All that you need to remember. But mainly this video, I want you to remind the body of Christ to rejoice, give thanks. Okay? Rejoice and give thanks, and remember that we are to be counted worthy to suffer for Jesus Christ. Don't fall into their trap to play their game, okay? Stick with the Word of God. I've got some videos I want to do, but I want to make sure the studies are true, so I've been going over them. And the Lord showed me some great stuff, and He'll show you some great stuff if you can stay focused. If you can stay focused on this and not be distracted by these lost people these heretics, these servants of Satan that will attack the Word of God, that will attack you personally. It's all about getting you distracted from this, the Word of God. It's all to get you distracted from the ministry. Okay? This is a call to everybody in the ministry, which is all the brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. Stand, don't fall, don't faint, don't let them distract you from this, and always, always, always give thanks and rejoice every time someone attacks you for truth okay when someone attacks you personally don't ever forget to do that and don't respond in anger there's nothing wrong with raising your voice righteous what they call righteous anger but I'm talking about when you're just steaming hot mad do not just jump on the camera go for a walk okay uh, spend some time in the word and prayer talk with a brother and sister in Christ vent a little bit you know, as they say. Um, but don't just jump on the camera right away. Okay? I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there, and I'm doing my best to spend and be spent for you guys. Okay? You're in my prayers. I'll see you in the next video.